All right, so next we're removing four bolts that are on the bottom of the bell housing that connect the transmission to the engine. Now, two of the bolts are actually blocked by the axles. So you're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket, a swivel joint, and then a medium sized extension, and then a breaker bar to get in there. I'll show you what I'm talking about when we go under there, but just giving you a heads up that it's a little tricky to get to it. All right. So here's the axle right here, obviously. Now this bolt right there, I don't want to cover it with my hand, but right there, it's blocked by the axle. Now, if I actually got a socket where it was straight with an, ext an extension, this was blocking it. So I couldn't get a wrench in there. So the only way to do this is with an extension, a swivel joint, and then a small 14 millimeter socket. So I'm gonna go in there with my breaker bar and see if I could crack it loose. Now, the best way to probably do it is to get it on there like this, see where, and then just go in there and then connect the breaker bar. The only other option would be to remove the axle and then it would be a lot easier but to get to it, but that's a long process that's really not necessary. There we go. There we go, there's the nut. Now, right above it, right here, there's actually a, a bolt. Now, that is actually just high enough to where you can get to it with a long extension, and then it'll go right over the axle. So this one's actually a lot easier. That first one at the bottom there is the really hard one. where having an engine lift would make things a lot easier, but you work with what you got. So right there is the bottom one we just removed. And then right back here is and the top one, you can go over the axle and loosen it. Like, I already cracked it loose, but you can loosen it from back here. So that's this side. Now, the other side is exactly the same thing, so I'm not going to film everything, but all you got to do is remove the two bolts that are on this side also. All right, so next we're going to be uh, removing the... That's on the motor mounts. There's two of them, one here and one here. We're removing the one on the passenger side first. Just like most of the fasteners on Subarus, they're all, it's gonna be another 14 millimeter. They really do love their 14 millimeter. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. So, you know, here's the here's what I just did, and then the other one's just right here. And now we're gonna go up top and remove the turbo. All right, so real quick, I just want to say I know that you don't need to remove the turbo to take the engine out of the car. The reason why I'm showing it is just to show if there's anyone that wants to remove their turbo and they're not even taking their engine out of the car, this is how you do it. All right, so there's three bolts that attach the turbo to the headers. I'm gonna spray them all down with some WD-40 because they're, any bolts that get really hot, 
tend to stick when you're trying to get them off. Now the three bolts again are going to be 14 millimeter. There's one right here. The other one's right back here. There's one on this side. All right, so remove the nut on the back and on this side right here, but there's still one more right here. Now, there's this banjo fitting right here that is the oil inlet. Now, there's the bolt here, and there's also the connection right here. Now, to be able to remove this, we have to first get two 17 millimeter wrenches, put one on the bottom, one on the top, and crack this loose. Then, remove this nut, and then we could take this fitting off and then get to the bolt that's underneath. All right, next we're going to move the hose that's to the inlet for the coolant. So next we're removing the coolant return line, which is right there. So now I have to loosen this bolt right here that holds on the intake. I'm just gonna snake this in there from underneath here. So I just loosen this nut that's right here and it tightens the clamp that's holding on the intake pipe. All right, so then here's the intake. We're gonna have to remove these vacuum lines. There's one here and then one right back here. So I remove these two connectors right here. Six millimeter Allen key. All right, so now that you remove those, you can wiggle this back a little bit just to get it free from the turbo. All right, so the oil return line is located directly underneath the turbo and it's right here. So I have to squeeze this hose clamp and then move it up to be able to pull the turbo out. So I have these uh, long needle nose pliers that are the 90 degree angle ones. So you're gonna have to go over your, uh, you have to go over the axle and then grab on right here and squeeze this one and then just pull it down. And then when you go to pull the turbo off, the fitting should just come up, the hose should just slide off. All right, so now that we took the hose clamp off of the oil return line. We're gonna have to tug on this a little hard for it to disconnect, and then it should just come right out. There we go. And then right here, there's a little vacuum line that you just pull off. You should be able to just pull your turbo right out. Wait, I don't even know how I'm supposed to introduce right. myself. This is my friend Tracy, he's gonna be helping out also. Alrighty, we're taking off the starter. Uh, so we got a bolt right down here. And then we also have another one up top, but we're gonna worry about this one right behind the bracket first. So we're gonna take a 14 mil under this cord, down this bracket right here. Let me just get it loose. So this bolt is really long. 
And so it's gonna be here a while because it's going straight through the bell housing. Alrighty, now that we got the bolt, hopefully just pull it out. Set it aside. Alright, now we're gonna get these two connectors right here. Which is your, your ground and power for the starter. Alrighty, so this one's in a bit of an odd position, so once you crack it loose, you're just gonna be doing it with your fingers. Alrighty, so we got one more bolt. Uh, we're gonna have to go into the car to get it. It's uh, diagonal from the first one we took off. So real quick, before you take off this bottom bolt, you're gonna wanna undo this connector right here. Um, it's really easy, you just pull it off. There's a little pinch tab, that's it. And then, I wanna take a 14 mil again. Just get it right on this bolt. So sometimes with stuff like this, it's best if you kind of take the pressure off of it by pushing it up because there is only one bolt in it. And it makes that, that last bolt come out quite a bit easier. Alright, then you just pull this guy right out, and that's it. And the car should just kind of fall into your hands. Be super careful not to drop it on your face, because it's heavy. Okay, so these are the last two bolts holding the transmission to the engine. The reason why they're still in is because you can't remove them until you have the engine supported. This is a screenshot from part four, which is what we're going to be doing next.